As we mentioned before, there's a lot of ways of filtering syrup. The filter press is the best way, and we're gonna show you how to do it. Don't be intimidated by what it is. It's actually quite simple. There's a pump that pressurizes your syrup, forces it through a, a set of filters. Our syrup is up to temperature. One thing we are gonna have to do is mix DE in the syrup, diatomaceous earth. It's a, just a organic material that, that ionically bonds to the impurities in your syrup. It's something that we add to the syrup so that it can collect all of the impurities. The DE along with those impurities are then caught by the paper filters, the cellulose papers that we put in to the press. From there, we're gonna pump it out of the filter press bank into the bottler, and it will be perfect. Let's get some papers loaded into it. Now, with any filter press, it's very important that these plates are not accidentally put in backwards. Uh, what you see what we did on our stainless steel filter press is we actually staggered the hangers, so it's not possible to hang it backwards. And I'll just give you an example. I'm trying to hang it backwards right now, and it just doesn't work. And I don't know a single maple syrup producer with, a, with an old aluminum filter press that hasn't hung plates backwards and had to restart their whole entire process, which is a big job. So I'm gonna load the papers in. The holes need to be down. Another advantage of the Smoky Lake stainless steel filter press is that it is a tilt-free unit. There are some units where you literally have to tilt the filter press bank up vertically, take the plates off, and then stack a paper, drop a plate, stack a paper, drop a plate. That's not necessary with this. With the, with the Smoky Lake stainless press, all we're doing is dropping a paper in and sliding the plate down. The unit we're using today holds 10 papers. From my personal experience, it has a capacity of about 30 gallons, meaning we can pump through about 30 gallons of dirty syrup before having to break it down and replace filters and recharge the DE. This press has a temperature monitor on it. It has, it has a thermometer that actually drops into the filter press banks. That is gonna be important in a couple of minutes when we actually start pumping syrup in because this press is cold right now. It's room temperature. And when we start pumping syrup through, the syrup is gonna extract that, that cold out of the plates and it's gonna exchange it with its heat. So it's actually gonna rob some heat out of our syrup. And the first syrup that enters the press is gonna try leaving cold. It's gonna leave the press cold. So we're actually gonna return it back to our pan, our, our basin full of hot syrup until it's up to temperature. And that's why we have a thermometer in here so we can actually watch that. So we're not guessing, we're not holding the plates and saying, ah, it's warm enough. The dial is there so we can actually see what's going on. So now that I have all the papers in, I'm gonna evenly tighten the plates. And evenly is key. This is just like the lug nuts on your car. You're not gonna tighten one as far as you can and then go tighten the other one. I'm intermittently changing from one stud to the other. And good even pressure is important. Keep in mind some weeping of syrup from out of the plates is normal, especially when you get toward the end of the cycling process and we're using higher pressure to keep pushing the syrup through. And that's why we, that's part of the reason we have a tray under here. It's, it's somewhat normal for a drip to fall here and there. With that said, the filter press is the least wasteful of all of the filtering options you have. When you use cone filters or flat filters, you invariably rinse a lot of syrup down the drain because they soaked it up. Those filters soak up that syrup. With the filter press, we have these extremely thin papers. And toward the end of the process, we, we use pressure to actually force the, the syrup out of the papers. And we do have a hand pump option of this, a more cost-effective entry-level filter press system. And even with the hand pump, you still are forcing that, that last syrup out with pressure. So very, very little waste with a filter press. 
The air powered diaphragm pump on our filter press is the only truly controllable, fully controllable powered pump that you can put on a filter press. There are electric gear pumps, but they're powered by an electric motor that can't monitor pressure. It's not powered by pressure. Literally, the exact air pressure that we're allowing into the pump is exactly the same pressure that we're putting on our filter press plates. So when I, when I turn my dial and I run 40 PSI, I have 40 PSI on my filter press plates and on my filters, crucially on my filters. The problem with the electric version of a diaphragm pump is it's gonna make 150 PSI. Then there's normally a bypass bleed valve that you can pipe the excess syrup away to try to maintain that pressure. It's a, it's a tough way of controlling things. It's, it's almost completely uncontrollable. So with a system like that, you typically end up with problems with blowing out filter press papers and making a, a mess. And uh, the other powered option is a gear pump, which is literally a hydraulic pump that's meant to power like a log splitter or a skid steer or something. It's, the fact that anyone ever brought that into the maple industry or a food industry is um, mind blowing, but it, it is still actually available out there, but it's something to be careful of. Um, know what you're getting into. A pump like that can create 2,500 PSI, which is unusable. A, a pressure like that is unusable. You're, you're, your filter press papers are gonna blow at about 90 or 100 PSI. Um, the other option, which is a good option, is a hand pump. For a small producer who doesn't wanna spend a lot of money getting into top quality syrup, a hand pump is a fantastic option. It's, it's literally, a, it's still a diaphragm pump, but it's literally powered by your hand. And it's not hard work. If you're a maple syrup producer, cutting your firewood is a thousand times more work than that hand pump is. It's a good option. Um, so just some knowledge on what's out there for pumps and some things to really look out for. Uh, an air diaphragm pump is, is definitely the best way to power a filter press. All right, let's get started on DE. I've had a lid over the top of the pan because the syrup is up to temperature and density is already perfected. I wanted to keep any evaporation from taking place. And if any condensation does want to drip off the pan lid, just let it fall in the pan. That's where it came from, that's where it belongs. The amount of DE that you put into your syrup is based on two things. How much syrup do you have to filter and how much DE and particles can your filter press hold? I've already mathematically figured out that our filter press holds three and a quarter cups of DE per window plate. That's three and a quarter cups here, 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 and here. There's five of them. So I'm gonna put in about 10 cups because I wanna leave some room for the, all of the sediment and sugar sand and everything else that we're filtering out. I need to leave room for that in that filter press. So I'm gonna put 10 cups in. And if I needed to maximize the holding capacity of that filter press, I would actually add more DE, not less. A lot of people get that confused. The DE is what's doing your filtering, keep that in mind. Some people have concerns the first time that they use DE because they, they feel like there's some kind of adulteration as if they're putting something harmful into the syrup. And especially people who are new to organic maple syrup production, they might have a, a specific concern about this. But this is not dissolved. The syrup is not dissolving this, this DE, which is why we're gonna keep it lifted and we're gonna keep stirring it. It is all filtered out. It's a necessary element to what we're doing. And none of this DE is gonna be left in, in the product at the end. And this is a food grade DE anyway. And that's all the DE we're gonna put in for now. And I'm gonna gently stir it in place, keeping in mind that it does settle. So I still need to come back here periodically and stir it again. So what, what DE is, it's actually a, a pulverized a mixture of fossils actually. And a lot of people are familiar with DE if they're a gardener 
Um, they can put DE around their tomato plants to keep the slugs from, from eating the leaves and stuff. So, and it does work. I, I too am a, a new gardener. And when we were having some problems with slugs killing our cabbage plants, I sprinkled this on the leaves and, and it took care of that problem. There's different kinds of DE used in all kinds of filtering processes uh, from pool filters and other commercial things to projects like um, deworming your, your dog, actually. There's, there's a million uses for DE, but the DE we're using is specific for what we're doing, and it, and it is food grade. And if you are an organic maple syrup producer, the process is no different. You're gonna use the same DE, same way. And that, that's the acceptable procedure in all states and provinces. With that said, none of this is making it into the final product. This, every, every molecule of the DE we put in is getting filtered out. And I am going to start the process of filtering. And like we mentioned before, we're gonna return the first of the clean syrup back into that container. And now I'm watching the temperature on the dial on the bank of the filter press. And I'm gonna keep on cycling this until the filter press comes up the temperature. Again, we're looking for about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, the filter press is up the temperature. Now let's start keeping it in our bottler. So Angela's gonna continue stirring. Remember that DE doesn't dissolve into the syrup. It will settle very quickly. So she's gonna keep on stirring, being careful to scrape the bottom of the pan to keep that DE lifted. We need that DE to come in with the syrup. That's what's doing our filtering. So if it's caked on the bottom after this whole program, it did us no good. And let's keep on pumping. We're gonna, we're gonna keep on running the syrup in. I currently, we just got started, so the, the papers are clean, the, nothing's clogged up whatsoever. So I'm still running with about 30 PSI to, to run the syrup through. As the filter press fills up with sediment, I'm gonna have to keep on increasing that pressure. And I'll stop at about 80 PSI. When I get to about 80 PSI, things are pretty well clogged up. It's time to stop and uh, clean out the press and start over. We won't have to worry about that. We're only doing about 15 gallons today. If I was trying to push 45 gallons through this press, it might be a concern that I have to watch out for. But we'll be done before we, we run out of capacity with the filter press. Also, by increasing the pressure that I have on the, the, the air pressure to the pump, I'm also able to control the speed. I can speed it up or slow it down. And that's very handy. When you're in a assembly line type thing and there's somebody filling bottles here, I can increase the speed on the filter press to keep incoming syrup to keep up with that person filling especially big bottles. So being able to control the speed is also very handy. One thing that's very important, probably the most important thing at this point, is to make sure that the temperature of the syrup is not above 190 Fahrenheit. At 193 Fahrenheit, you will start precipitating more sugar sand in the clean syrup. So if the exit temperature of your clean maple syrup is 193 Fahrenheit, it's probably gonna to need to be filtered again because the sugar sand is precipitating at that temperature. Uh, without limit, at, at the temperature of 193, or if your syrup is heated by direct flame, meaning you have your clean syrup in a pan on a gas burner or on an electric stove top, you're gonna to continue precipitating more sugar sand. So in that environment, keep in mind that it, it is not gonna be clear anymore. It's gonna be just some unharmful, but very ugly sugar sand in the product. So I always say when you're getting used to a filter press, learn, from e learn something from each time you run it. And the most you can learn from a filter press is by examining the cakes of DE at the end of your filtering process. So I'm gonna back these nuts way off. I'm gonna do my best to try to secure a, a cake that's really, really intact. 
So when it comes to the filter press, we always say to learn by doing. And the best way to learn from a filter press is to examine the cakes that come out from within the window plates. And the, where these window plates came from was uh, every, every other plate in the filter press is a window plate. And where these cakes came from was from within these window plates, like so. Each of these banks up against one of the, the waffle plates, the, the grid plates. And if a filter press was maxed out, meaning the capacity was reached, the maximum capacity was reached, this would be one continuous cake. These two together would make one continuous cake, the thickness of this window plate. And as you can see, the cakes are only about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch thick. So I estimate we maybe used a third of this filter press's capacity. We could have got by with a smaller one. We did 15 gallons, we could have done 45 gallons. So that's what's interesting about it. Now, next time I use this filter press, I can remember back to this, or maybe I'll document it, and I can feel comfortable running at least 30 gallons, maybe 45 gallons, through the filter press, through one, one set of filters. And this is what that stuff is. This is your DE, all that DE that we were putting in before. This should ease your concerns about what DE is. Every bit of it is caught in these filters. And with this, there's some sugar sand and some other impurities that was in your sap or in your syrup. That's all within this stuff right here. So this is what it boils down to. Superior filtration, very little waste, and excellent ease of use.